Today, Precarious plays Deus Ex Human Revolution. I'm in. All right. Ugh, man. More smog. Ah, uh, but then there's that. Probably turns it off. I'm just irritated because I actually took the time this playthrough to become immune to gas and electricity and Beginning final approach the other one yeah flashbang yeah yeah the three major food groups <laughs> i became resistant to all of them except for cereal <laughs> that is not one of the three major food groups Ugh. for uh, a spy on the go it just makes me want to like one of the Oh, hello. Got an itchy back. <sighs> Goodbye. Sleepy man. Well, if I can round the corner. Confirmed. Mm -hmm. Docking bay confirmed. They would tell you if this was on a real timer, right? They're just trying to make it seem urgent. I don't know. Uh, they definitely will 100% kill those people at the start of the game if you drag your feet. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't describe what we're doing as dragging our feet, for sure, so... I mean, I think you and I are both just as eager to get off this boat. And maybe, I don't know, call the... Whatever government of whatever land we end up in and be like, Hey, um... You know, human trafficking, it's here, I, know, I found it. <laughs> I know squat about maritime law. I have no idea who there is, is in charge. There is nowhere on the planet where human trafficking is okay. But I don't know who you would, who do you report it to? The UN probably. The, the UN cannot just be in charge of all... No, but that's the biggest crimes. group of people, and they would all get upset about it, and eventually somebody would, you know, do something. I mean, that's that's one way to talk to everybody at once. Hey, guys. We got some human trafficking happening right now. And I don't know what you can do about that, but I not have stealth it's, three? it's here. <laughs> No, oh, I don't have it. Ah, that explains that. I didn't even have enough points to get the really good stuff. Uh. No, I don't have that Gucci stuff. <laughs> you don't have that Gucci stuff. Well, you yeah. wasted all the Gucci on your arms. I'm so sorry. And your glasses. Your daytime sunglasses. You never noticed before. Actually, no, I think I... I said before in this playthrough that Adam's arms look a little thin for his frame. Yeah. But there's something here where they, they look even even more so. Yeah, I think it's because of you're looking at them from the front. From the side, they don't look so crazy. But, hmm. That's odd. Oh, it's because it's in the door. Oh, but not that part. I'm talking about the forearm. Oh. Hmm. Oh, but yeah, now that, now that you <laughs> mentioned it, the bicep. I was like, boy, he does look like he got skinny arms. I mean, he doesn't need them to be big because it's really just muscles. Oh, but it's also the forearm a bit. Yeah, the forearm's in there a little bit. Some yeah. of the elbow was cutting down on the mass. I don't know. What I do know is I'm just going to let this guy hear me. Yeah, and just take care of that. That's what you gotta do whenever you don't have the really, really good sneaky, sneaky yeah. powers. You just gotta catch him by surprise. Well, by slightly less surprise. You gotta punch them as they are surprised. Well, they don't call anything in if they Securing just hear you. Mm. All personnel prepare for unloading. Is there somebody around? Okay. I think there might be somebody over there. Yeah. Uh, actually, the minimap on the gamepad makes it seem like they're 
Maybe above? There. Yes. Is that a stairwell? Ugh. What? Can you get in there? Do you want to go in there? So many questions. So many lies. Oh, gosh. Something, something conspiracy. So many indoor sunglasses. <laughs> 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 I can hear the indoor sunglasses in your voice. Those are retractable, too, aren't they? Yes. I know. That makes it so much more... Ah, uh, what? Mm, too heavy. Too heavy. Too heavy. Too heavy for baby Jensen and his skinny arm. <laughs> Needs the bigger arms, the double arm. Oh, do you remember that amazing robot friend that we had that had four arms? Because you decided to include that as a mm. drop in a D and D game, like an extra set of arms. Yes, but that we was didn't. The best. Uh, that's something that I had been planning for a while, but then the campaign had to end early, and I was like, "We'll just all you the cool things, them. all the cool things that I wanted to give to people over time. We'll just have them all for the last session." Yeah, that was really fun. What did your character get? Um, I don't remember. I think. That my character was pretty amazing. Everybody got Everybody something. Everybody had though. like I think I had like a fly speed or a hover speed or something like that. Towards the end, I was a rogue, but I was. And you already had a had a kind of. You know what? It's funny if I were to, if we were to play with that character now. Yeah. I would not have cared to. I would not have made it so complicated i would just give you a straight up fly speed well i think that you were being conservative well i think like a lot of i think that there's an inclination whenever you dm and you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of experience or if you have a bad experience once mm -hmm. giving someone a fly speed it makes you too conservative yeah uh it makes you too fearful of characters with a fly speed but it's, it's actually not that. It does not have to be that big of an advantage. Yeah. It's really a lot about it. A, a lot of it has to do with uh, level design, essentially. Well, you gave everybody, like, you sort of messed with all of the races. You homebrewed all of the races because we had time. And I ended up with a race that was... Inspired by the... The Valkyries in, in Odin Sphere. Right. And, um, I mean, if you haven't, just go Google Valkyries in Odin Sphere and you can see what amazing cuties they are. And then also, those wings gave agility bonuses. So I ended up being like a very good rogue. Yeah, well, I mean, you're just very dexterous and you had a. Uh, really it was a good fit. It was a good fit for being a rogue. I don't. I hardly remember how that character played, though, because I was so like focused on everybody else's characters because I thought they were all very cool. Well, it's funny, but I mean, your your glide didn't actually come up that often, right? No, it didn't, but that was because of the environments we were in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the fact that, I think that that, that's probably the scenario where it might be the biggest problem. More people in boxes. Is if you have, if the entire party has a fly speed and you don't want to have to actually deal with people flying around. Yeah. Because if only one person has a fly speed... I can't abandon the party. Right, because that's that's a, a good way to get smashed up. I mean, I can, you know, make any elevation-based traps trivial, 
Like for the, you. For me. Yeah, but I was the rogue, so you send me first anyway. So what the big deal? There isn't one, so fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't think... I think that the best trap that you Securing laid aid. for us... All personnel, prepare for unloading. They're talking about human trafficking. Uh, so these people think that they're transporting criminals exclusively, which these m might be. Nope. Nope. Never mind. No. Nope. <laughs> Straight away. 16 year old girls loves tiaras. Is that what it is? <laughs> uh. Another another Japanese girl, age twenty to thirty, who was a club girl? Question mark. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Was Found it? mugged on street. Yeah, real criminal. I didn't realize there was going to be another floor of these tragedies. But hey, it's a big ship. Well, I don't know why I'm surprised. 